Hey everyone, so I just came up with a great idea for a video and it was, the idea was actually uh, sparked by a video that I had watched on YouTube that someone had put out. Uh, and before I say who this person is, I want you all to know that I used to listen to this person um, and the only reason that I listen to them now is because this person always features another individual on their show that does have a lot of in time knowledge. And I do want to hear what that person has to say. However, the individual that features this person, um, I don't watch his channel anymore. Now, I used to years ago. Starting at about the beginning of 2017, I started watching him. And I'm going to tell you who this is. It's Paul Bagley. Okay, I started watching this Paul Bagley back in 2016. And then he even came to Colorado Springs. And I actually met him here in Colorado Springs at this church where he was speaking and I got my picture taken with him and uh, then after a time had passed God started telling me that he no longer wanted me to listen to this person and I kind of fought him on that a little bit because I was like you know hey I like him you know he's he seems like a nice guy he's funny he makes people laugh he's entertaining uh, he puts a lot of good information in his videos, and God was adamant, and he told me that he did not no longer want me watching this individual and his channel. And so the reason he gave me was because he's making money off the gospel. He's making money off of people. And yes, I saw that after a time had passed, and especially, especially after he started to, um, showcase different companies at the beginning of his video and so I knew that I had to walk in obedience and not do what I wanted to do even though I liked this person I really liked this person he was charismatic you know and I'm drawn to those kinds of people I really liked him as a person however God was very adamant telling me that he no longer wanted me to watch this individual because he is selling the gospel. He is making money off of God is all he's doing. And, you know, it's very clear um, to most people who are in the truth. And sometimes it's hard to admit when you really like someone. When you really like someone as a person, it's hard to admit that they're doing wrong. But we must do this. We must do this, okay? So I don't listen to Paul Begley's ministry anymore. However, I do turn him on and I fast forward to where that guy Mike from around the world comes on because when this guy Mike from the, around the world comes on, he seems to have a lot of knowledge of the end times and stuff that's going on. And he has, sometimes he has information that other people don't have and of course i want that information at my fingertips because i am i have been called to this office and you know i've been called to part of my job is to expose what's going on in the last days and i try to do that as much as i can but um maybe i haven't been real faithful about doing that lately but yeah so i listen to this guy mike when he comes on so i fast forward through all of the paul begley stuff i don't listen to any of that i just listen to the part where mike comes on now, I don't condone Mike praising and bragging Paul Begley up one wall and down the other. I think he is a little deceived on that, okay? But he does have some, he seems to have some information at times that is very interesting um, on the end times. And so I take what I can get from the broadcast, you know, so that I can be in the know. Because <sighs> it's important. Um... So, this is a video that you guys might really want to keep in mind and really pay attention to. 
um, because, you know, there's some stuff that is going around that may not be 100% accurate, okay? Um, that's why I'm putting out this video because there's some information that's going around that's that I don't believe is is a hundred percent accurate now even though I do think a lot of what Mike says has come true well I've seen where a lot of what this guy has said has come to pass but yet I think some of the stuff he says I don't so much agree with and this is going to be a video addressing that so in a pretty recent broadcast, and th in fact, I think it was just the, the most recent one that Mike and Paul did together, they were discussing about safest places for the end of the world, and they were talking about how some people say that the Ozarks are a safe place, that Colorado Springs in itself is a safe place, and how, and Mike was just sharing with Paul how he felt that that was not true and that he even went further to say that Colorado wasn't really that safe I mean was one of the worst places like for safety in other words he was telling everyone that Colorado was like totally not safe and but yet he didn't provide any information for why he felt that way and if you look at any future United States map if you look at any future United States map, you will see where they expect the flooding to be um, and the states that they expect to be wiped out. Now, we all know that there's a huge fault in California. Once that goes, it's going to kill a lot of people. And once that fault goes, it could create a massive tsunami that would drown the left side of the map, several states on the left side of the map, and lots of people would perish. So we know, we know that the left side of the, the map is not safe for the factor of earthquakes and tsunamis. We also know the left side of the map is not safe due to the volcanic activity in Washington State, California. Uh, I don't know where, where every single volcano is, but I know most of them are in California and Washington State. And so when those volcanoes go, the whole west coast is going to be a mess so you definitely don't want to be too far west okay now the problem with living on the top of the map we're talking like montana dakotas etc 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 there's lots of states up at the top okay i'm just giving a few examples if you're living at the top of the map it gets very it gets deadly cold it gets deadly cold and there's snow so in a power outage you definitely don't want to be at the top of the map okay in fact i don't even know how some people live in some of these states that are deadly cold that get below zero all the time i don't know how they do it anyway but gotta have heat in your house heat in your car fireplace yeah i don't know how they do it bundle up and cool several layers I, I don't know but now if you go down to the bottom of the map you're still not safe. Like if we're talking like Texas, Louisiana, any states at the bottom down there. Okay, those are just some examples. You're going to have issues of flooding and heat, tornadoes, large hail. Okay, so I mean if, if you're in Texas, you know you're always dealing with tornadoes and hail. If you're in Louisiana, you're always dealing with flooding. So why live at the bottom of the map? Okay, when you're going to deal with at least a lot of heat and a lot of flooding. All right. Hurricanes come right up there, up, right up through there, through Louisiana and places at times. And then if you're on the, the far right side of the map on the East Coast, um, I come from the state of Maryland and I happen to know from experience that that state gets very cold in the winter and gets snow. And it also gets very hot in the summer. And if you have a power outage, it is not fun. Now, if you're on the right side of the map and a huge tsunami hits for any reason, it's gonna drown most of the states up and down that eastern seaboard. 
Now, if you're up on the right, far right, like say, you know, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, places like that, you know, up near the Great Lakes, you're near a bunch of water. I mean, so if you're up on the top part of the map, I've heard lots of times where people's basements have gotten really flooded up there. They get bomb cyclones, you know, they're famous for that. So um, you're dealing with flooding up there and cold and heat, you know. And then if you go down south, if you go down to the southern states on the map, you're talking about Hurricane Alley. You're going to get the hurricanes. And so there you got the flooding there. Um, if you're in the middle of the map, like you're in Missouri, uh, Arkansas, um, I'm just giving you, giving a few examples. Uh, you're dealing with the large tornadoes, the large hail, and if the fault line goes in the middle of the country, there's a lot of states that are going to be toast down through there. Flooding. Okay. So, actually, I have no idea what Paul and Mike are talking about. No disrespect to Mike, because he, he, I know he does give a lot of good information, but, you know, I don't know what they're both talking about, because, actually, Colorado, to me, would seem like a much safer place, away from the coastlines, away from the severe heat and the severe cold states. Um... So I'm just putting it out there. Uh, now, here in Colorado, I think the worst thing we really get here is a stray blizzard. Like, it's rare that we get a blizzard in Colorado Springs. Now, they get blizzards in other places of Colorado, but not as frequently in the springs. Um, I lived through one blizzard the whole time I've been out here. Uh, and all I did was, all I had to do was stock up and stay inside. That was it. Uh, now, if the power goes out when you're in the middle of a blizzard and high winds or something in Colorado, like say a blizzard hits and there's high winds and the power goes out, will it be cold? Yeah, but I think I'd rather be in the cold of Colorado than be up in the top states when that happens, when the power goes out. And it's dead cold, like deadly cold up in the upper states. I think I'd rather be in Colorado. Uh, does that mean, like, when the power goes out, you won't have to dig out some below zero sleeping bags or bundle up in layers? Yeah, you will, but it's a lot better than being up in the upper states, in my opinion. I mean, we get some large hail here, but it hits in spots. So it depends on if you're in that actual pocket of hail when it hits or not. So it's kind of hit and miss. Um, and that's about it. We get like a stray blizzard, um, we get some high winds, we get some hail. Now, do we get fires? Yeah, but the wildfires are usually out where people build these huge houses with lots of land near a bunch of trees. Uh, usually the wildfires don't just come down in the city um, near like the residential homes or apartments, uh, it usually stays out in a certain area. Now, does, now that doesn't mean that we won't have some smoke to deal with in the air, you know? Uh, some people might wear a mask during that time. Uh, some people might crank up their AC and, or their air cleaners and filter a lot of the stuff out of their place if that's going on. But, um, I mean, I've never seen the closest I've seen Colorado Springs evacuate from a fire was back in 2012, and I wasn't here that year. But um, I had friends who were here, and they told me about it, but they still didn't have to evacuate. I mean, so, I mean, yeah, pe people did where they were closest to the fire, but I mean, like, you know, um, it still didn't come down into the city itself, actually. It came very close, but it didn't, it didn't end up doing it. So, I mean... Overall, you guys, I, I, maybe I just had to rant a little bit because these guys don't know what they're talking about. If you look at a future map of the United States and look where all the flooding is going to go, you can see the right side of Colorado is completely bare. Nothing happened over there. Now, the very, very left part of the state had a little bit of blue flooding. Whoopee. There was like nothing to the right. The worst 
thing that people talk about for Colorado, and especially the Springs area of Colorado Springs, is the fact that we're near NORAD. But the thing is, is that NORAD is encased in a metal mountain. And I don't think, now this is just my opinion, I don't know what they'll try, but I don't think they would try bombing NORAD. I don't think anybody would be that stupid because it's, it's encased in a metal mountain. So would they even bother trying? I don't know. Uh, that's probably the worst the worst thing I can even think of. Um, so I'm just not sure where Mike and Paul's comments are coming from on Colorado being the least safest. I don't see that whatsoever at all. I see a lot of other, t other states having major issues. Uh, so just thought I would put this video up, you guys. Um, the Bible says in the end times, people are going to run for the hills. So the hills, that means mountains, mountains, mountains. So like even the Ozarks, I would think would be fairly safe. Now, like other areas, like away from the Ozarks, like other places in Missouri, for example, would not be safe. But closer to the mountains, it's always safe because the mountains block water and the mountains block wind. So just saying you know i'm just using common sense here and i don't know what mike and paul are talking about but they happen to mention my particular city and i thought i would get on here and talk about how i don't see that happen i don't see anything that drastic happening um now colorado does have a few earthquakes but it's like it's not in colorado springs so i don't know what they're I don't know why they picked Colorado Springs specifically, because, like, you know, now they did make a comment saying that they didn't feel like Colorado was very safe, but they specifically mentioned Colorado Springs, which I don't get that, because uh, we don't get anything really all that bad here. We haven't ever, and I don't see that happening in the future unless, I mean, unless, like, an asteroid falls on the place or something like that, you know? So, if they're referring to asteroids, well, I guess no one is really safe, but, you know, when it comes to other disasters, I would think that Colorado would be a lot safer than a lot of other places. So, I'm just putting that out there. Um, just remember this video. Uh, if you're thinking of moving, you might want to head to the mountains. So, that's all I'm going to say about it. Um, and I will be back on with some more videos sometime.